Hi, Dr. Don, hope you're doing well. Um, I, I guess this is the first of many video chats that we'll have for the remainder of the semester. Um, so I'll just get started, jump right in. Um, I decided to look at doing business in the UK um, and I decided to do that because in the last two or two months ago, um, the family owned company that I work for was actually acquired by a company that is based in the United Kingdom. So of course, um, once the sale went through, we had a lot of visitors, a lot of different um, managers coming to visit and we're getting to know them and just thought it would be interesting to see, you know, what their society, uh, how their society behaves. In my casual internet research, I found a couple of common themes in the articles um, describing the business climate in the UK. Um, one being that punctuality is very important. Um, I, I read that, you know, they have, they generally send out agendas prior to meetings and they're uh, expected to be followed uh, rigidly with maybe some time at the end of a meeting to discuss ideas that weren't listed on the agenda or anything that someone wants to bring up. Um, on the flip side, I did read that showing up to dinner 15 minutes late has been normalized and that is considered polite, where for me, I think that punctuality goes for, you know, social settings and business settings that, you know, you need to be on time, be at work. A lot of the articles also discuss how introductions are uh, done in business settings. Um, it mentioned that, you know, most people are comfortable with using first names right off the bat, um, but it is advised to use surnames and professional titles when dealing with people more senior. Um, I found this just thinking about in, in business settings that I've been in, you know, I, I rarely am introduced to someone and a title is uh, made known immediately. Um, usually like, you know, if we're in like a conference or something and you go around the room and introduce yourself, then you may speak of your title. And I just wondered if, you know, in the UK, if, if titles are used more frequently or saying like, hey, I'm Elton, I am VP of, of, of such and such, if that's a common one thing that I did find interesting is uh, one of the articles stated that uh, academic titles are, are rarely used. And if they are used, it can be seen as a, a form of arrogance. And for me, um, referring to someone as doctor or is, is almost like, you know, saying, sir, ma'am. And I think that it's appropriate and I, I wouldn't you wouldn't not use that that title unless someone suggested, hey, call me, you know, just by my. Along the lines of introductions, um, a few of the articles discussed um, how to break the ice or the conversations to have when you're first meeting someone. Um, and it, a lot of them mentioned is keeping it light, just talking about the weather, you know, how was your travel in? Um, and I feel like all of, all, of, all of that is conversation that we have in, in our culture, but I think we get a little more personal. Um, Hofstede's model uh, dis describes uh, UK as being, you know, a, a scoring high on the individualism um, scale and being very private. While U.S. scored just a few points lower, I feel like we get way more personal when, when chit-chatting or the, the water cooler chat. Um, it goes into like, how's your family doing? How, how, how's your day been? And a, a lot of the, the articles that I read said that, you know, people in the UK like to refrain from this conversation because they don't want to be embarrassed or they feel like this is we're opening up the door to be embarrassed by, you know, sharing too much or, or getting too personal. I think this idea of keeping it light is going to be very difficult for um, my my coworkers, um, especially when dealing with those managers that are based in the UK, um, because we we do tend to overshare or get more personal. And I don't think it's, you know, intentional, but we are on first name basis with each other's family members. We ask about, you know, how's your kids? How are your kids? How's school going for them? Um, I actually just, we had a compliance training um, with our, our new organization a couple of weeks ago, and they discussed how, you know, asking a team member how their doctor visit or how, you know, 
it's actually can be considered harassment. Um, and the first thing I thought about is I currently have a team member now that is, is battling cancer and, you know, she's been very open about it and this is her second battle with it. So everybody in the, within the organization is in tune with what's going on with her. And so when she goes to the doctor, she comes back and we're like, well, Gwen, how was, how was this appointment? How's this, this treatment going? And it was interesting to, to learn that, you know, our, our new organization, they frown upon that. And maybe it's, it's frowned upon in, in many organizations within the U.S. culture or society. But, you know, being a part of a family owned organization is, is, is normal. With all that being said, um, when going through Aaron Meyer's tool um, on the trusting scale, it notes that the UK is more so on the relationship based side versus the United States where we're more task based. Um, and I think the actual paragraph or description of, of this trusting scale is that, you know, if you're more on the task based side, you know, the, the, you do good work, you're trusted, you're, you're considered reliable. While on the relationship based side, it's those you're building trust, the relationships and the dinners and the conversations uh, at the, the water cooler, essentially. Um, and I, I found that kind of a contradiction to what I read in, in other articles saying that, you know, basically when having these conversations with, with UK based uh, manage, managers, you know, you don't want to get too private, but then the country mapping tool suggests that, you know, you, to build trust with someone or build trust within your workplace, you, you want to have those pub, uh, pub conversations or, or dinners. Um, whereas just in the U S as you do good work and, and you, you're trusted. Um, for me, that kind of presents a problem because, you know, Currently now, I'm not a fan of the after hours uh, socializing. Um, I, I go to work and I, I do what I'm asked. And as I mentioned with a lot of the other uh, scales on the Hofstede model, um, the UK and the US are right there together. A lot of the scales just differed by a few points for each country. Um, and the same for the masculinity scale. The UK is a highly uh, success driven society, just as the US, but the model may mention that they may not show it immediately. Um, and I'm actually kind of glad that I have read through this and decided to pick the UK because um, if if I had were in a business situation where, you know, I, I perceived someone, one of our UK partners as being laid back, you know, kind of um, not really, you know, success driven, um, and then they flipped the switch on me and, you know, it was kind of like a competition. I probably would feel like they were a wolf in uh, sheep's clothing. Um, the similarities on the masculinity scale actually gives me a little bit of relief. Um, knowing that our, the motivators of both uh, societies are very similar, you know, wanting to, to do our best, um, wanting to be successful. Uh, it just is just interesting that we express it differently, and I think that that part will be something to um, recognize as you know start to form relationships with those in the UK. Um, one thing that surprised me um, when using Hofstede's model to compare the two societies um, was on the long-term orientation scale. Um, and the way that I understood that scale was that, you know, when looking at change, how much do you rely on the past or traditions? And the UK scored about middle ways. Um, I think the score was a 51 um, and that they had no preference in, you know, using the the past to shape the future. While the US um, was scored low and, and indicated that we, you know, do use our, our traditions to, to face what to lay out what happens in the future um overall I, I believe that doing business in the uk is going to be very similar to doing business in the us um and it almost reminds me of just how us uh, southerners may interpret the behaviors of people from the, the northern part of our country um, and that, yeah, the, the overall principles and values are similar, but just our behaviors may be slightly different.